In this video, I will be teaching you the basics of how to go and make soy candles. So let's get started, let's begin, and let's grab all of our materials that we need. To make soy-based candles, you're going to need candle wax, candle wicks, which you can actually get all of this in a kit, little stickers to go and stick the wick to, oils, these are certain oils that are only for candles, cups, glasses, and also other things that you're going to put the candle into. Tin and glass work the best for this. These wick holders also come in massive handy because it just kind of puts it right into place and holds it, but you don't need these. You can always use a pencil or pretty much anything to wrap the wick after you've poured the wax. So let's take a look at our soy wax. Now this is shaved soy wax and it's going to be a lot easier if you have this rather than a brick form of wax to go and have it melt. This is unscented and the greatest thing about soy wax is that it burns really clean unlike other waxes. A lot of what we're going to be doing is measurement based so you definitely want a scale. So go and put a bowl down or anything that you're going to use for going and pouring and putting the wax into. I also have a pouring cup. I definitely highly suggest getting one of these or one that might be bigger. We're going to go and scoop the wax. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making up a pound of the wax and melting it and just getting it prepped and ready to roll. I do suggest because you're going to be making multiple candles for this to also have a pound as well. For the cup that I was using, it ended up being about four and a half scoops to make a pound. Now onto the fragrance oil. So a really good thing to go and know for soy-based wax is that you don't want to go and overload it with a whole bunch of oil. And these oils that I'm using are premium oils, so you're only going to need about 6%. The load for soy wax is about 6 to 12% of oil that you want to go and put in, and 6% usage rate for a pound would come out to one ounce. Take some boiling water, put it down onto an oven mitt, and then go and put your bowl that has the wax into it and let it melt. It's going to take a while for this to melt. It took about 15 to 20 minutes for the whole pound to melt. And as it's melting, you're going to want to mix it at least one to two times just to go and break up everything. Make sure to use an oven mitt or something with your hands so you don't end up going and burning yourself because it's going to be hot, of course, if it's a metal bowl. Mix it up, and when this is fully and totally melting, let me explain about different glass types. This is a frost glass type. These are great for soy wax candles, and these are probably the ones that you want to go with. This is glass. This is also great too, but there is something that does happen with glass sometimes. This one is metal. Metal is also great for soy-based candles, but the thing is, is you do not want to use plastic ever with candles because the flame and anything that is hot is going to go and melt this, and it's a fire hazard. So metal and glass are definitely your go-to. Now with glass containers, this is a candle that I made previously and you see that it kind of peeled from the side. With frosted containers, you're not going to have any of that because you're not going to see it. Now these wicks, we're going to go and put these into the middle. We're going to use the stickers, so peel off one side, make sure it does not peel from the sheet. And then you're going to go and stick this right in the middle, quickly take it off, and then place it into the center of your glass. It's really easy as one, two, three. What you're going to do is you're going to do this for all of the other containers as well, and it's pretty much the same exact thing. The glass that I just put this wick into, though, there was a little bit of difficulty. Ones that have more bumps and grooves at the top of them might go and serve to be kind of a little bit harder to go and put these wicks into. It's just one of those things that kind of presses your fingers away, along with also tapered ones that are tapered towards the top. It's going to be a little bit harder to put the wick in, and you might want to consider maybe getting some tweezers or pliers or something like that to go and assist you. Now that your wax is fully melted, slowly and carefully take it out of your pot of boiling water, go and remove the pot, and then go and move the bowl up with oven mitts still on. And then we're going to check the temperature, but it looks like I got a little bit of water in here accidentally, and what you can do is just scoop it out with a spoon. It's really easy to go and do, and it'll come right out. Now to check it with the thermometer, I'm using an old meat thermometer, and it should be just about around 135 degrees. And then go and pour your oil in. After that is in, go and mix it up. Make sure to swirl it around at least 10-15 times, maybe let it sit for a couple of minutes, and now you're going to go and scoop it out and start to go and pour it into your candles. Definitely go slow with this and have some paper down, and it might take a couple of times to go and fill these up fully, but keep in mind, you want to go nice and slow, and really just make sure you don't want to spill a ton everywhere. 
Now this little metal piece here, again it has the hook, so you just slide it down and you hook your candle wick into place. You can also use a pencil or any sort of wooden dowel and twist the candle wick around, but I just find that these are a little bit easier, especially when you're first starting off, and they also keep everything in place and you don't have to worry about it shifting as much. Now after your candles have sat, these sat for just about 24 hours. You can have them sit for a lot longer though. Usually most candle makers have their candles sit for two to four days or longer just to have everything really meld together. Soy wax is like this too at the top. It's not always going to be perfect, but if you want to have an even surface, you can always go and use a heat gun to go and get it flatter. But of course, these aren't going to be perfect because they're soy wax. You can see at the side here, there's a little bit of separation, but that happens. Now we're going to cut the wicks. What I like to do is I like to use the actual cup edge as a measurement of where to cut the wick. You also don't need to limit yourself to just making traditional candles. You can also make shell candles or anything like that. I actually have a tutorial that's coming soon and these make great wedding favors or just great for putting onto the table during the summer. Now you can go and light your candles and what you want to do too after you've lit your candles for the first time is with most candles, you want to just let it burn for a couple of minutes to a couple of seconds and just really let it get down because you're not going to get any of the smell until it starts to burn into the candle. You could always go and cut the wick a little bit shorter, but I really don't suggest it, at least for your first time burning the candle. And now you can go and make some great smelling candles. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, have a great one and take it easy.